So I've had my M1 Mac Mini for more than a year now and it's still chugging along just fine even in 2023. This bad boy was first released in November of 2020, updated with the new M1 chip that replaced the prior Intel-based Macs. And since then, I have had no problems with it and Apple has never looked back. The thing about the Mac Mini is that it's just oh so versatile and best of all, its best feature is the fact that you don't necessarily need first party Apple peripherals to use it. You can use a variety of keyboards, mice, and even monitors. I realized a while ago that I haven't given my Mac Mini any attention in quite a while and for this video, I not only wanted to show you guys my Mac Mini setup, but also let you all know what you can expect performance wise from this awesome compact machine in case any of you are in the market for a powerful yet discreet new computer. You know, it's funny, initially when I first became conditioned into the world of Apple, I was unsure as to what the Mac Mini even did. It's just a silver looking squarish box with an Apple logo up top, big whoop. For any of my 90s babies, you guys remember those huge and tall computer towers? Those towers were essentially the heart and brain of your computer and normally it came bundled in with a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. Well, think of the Mac Mini as solely being that computer tower only modernized and shrunken down considerably to be able to fit into just about any entertainment setup or desk with ease and of course you have the power to choose your peripherals. This is the magic of the Mac Mini. It's compact, powerful, and relatively affordable. If we're solely talking about Apple computers, given the fact that the cheapest segue into Apple's computer lineup that isn't the Mac Mini will be the MacBook Air with the M1 chip. That obviously comes included with a trackpad, keyboard, and display because, uh, well, it's a laptop. But that starts at $999, whereas the Mac Mini alone has a starting price of only $699. Sure, you do need to buy all the other stuff for it to work, but you may already have everything else and just need the computer component. Well guys, today we're going to go over a long term review of the M1 Mac Mini as well as show you guys what accessories I prefer to use. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> All right, so guys, first, let's go over the design of the Mac Mini, seeing as it's quite simplistic, but it works so flawlessly and is very Apple-like. First, the aluminum chassis is still milled out of a single block of metal and looks very familiar. In fact, the design of the Mac Mini has been little changed for the past decade or so. As they say, if it's not broken, don't fix it, right? You have a small light indicator at the front that shines white whenever the computer is turned on, with, of course, the obligatory polished Apple logo right on top. You'll notice that there's this plastic circular portion at the bottom that elevates the Mac Mini a few millimeters off your desk, and this is for ventilation and to effectively allow the Mac Mini to breathe when under heavy loads. The Mac Mini is not meant to be user upgradable, but this plastic portion does come off should you need to take it into the Apple Store for troubleshooting. Again, the design is simple and I love the sharp edges here, and even though you'll rarely hold it in the hands, the Mac Mini is also very lightweight, only weighing 2.6 pounds and measures 7.7 by 7.7 by 1.4 inches. In terms of ports and I.O., we get a generous array of options back here contained within this black plastic panel. Starting from the left hand side, we feature our power button, our power port where the AC adapter hooks up to, an Ethernet port to hardwire your internet connection, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, an HDMI port, dual USB 3.0 ports, and even a headphone jack. Pretty crazy to see that still in 2023. And also there's a vent down there that allows some of that hot air to exit the machine. While mostly everything on the exterior looks and feels familiar, the biggest upgrade to the Mac Mini that makes it an extremely viable contender even in 2023 was the implementation of Apple's own silicon in the form of the now infamous Apple M1 chip that single-handedly revolutionized computer chips and is still leagues ahead of many desktops and laptops in terms of performance and efficiency. The M1 was groundbreaking when it first came out. It combines your system memory, it also combines your storage and your GPU all in one chip. That way it's faster and more secure. It's clearly designed to flex its engineering marvel and does good on that promise thanks to its 5 nanometer process technology. The chip itself is also paired with an 8 core GPU that's also on the same chip and comes equipped with 8 processing cores. That's for performance cores and for efficiency cores. So basically, in short, for my non-tech nerds out there, let me put it very simply. This computer is plenty capable for the majority of people 
and if you have yet to try an Apple device with an M1 chip, you're seriously missing out. There's just insane power here under the hood, and the M1 chip is just so well optimized that everything is just so fluid, smooth, and consistent. Not only will the M1 chip power through for years to come, but the software support for it will last well into the late 2020s if I had a guess. So now, let me go over my setup with you guys, and by the way, every item and peripheral mentioned will be linked down below. Use my affiliate links if you find any of these interesting. And if you consider picking anything up, you'll be directly supporting my channel as I'll receive a small kickback from your purchase. So of course, starting with the Mac Mini itself, this is a mid-tier model Mac Mini with both upgrades to RAM and SSD. So instead of the starting 256 gigs, I upped that to one terabyte of storage. I thought that seemed pretty reasonable, especially considering I got my MacBook Pro 16 inch equipped with a whopping four terabytes of storage. Then, the only other option is to double your RAM from 8GB to 16GB, seeing as it's not uncommon for me to have a Chrome tab open, plus Adobe Photoshop, plus Final Cut Pro, plus Logic Pro, and then Thinkorswim's platform to track the markets. For my workload, 16GB just made sense, but it may not for you, you just have to weigh out your pros and cons. Then, you may have noticed this extra wide curved display, I love it for looking at charts. Few of my watchers know that I follow the stock market every single day, seeing as how I sell call and put options to the market for some residual weekly income. And this kind of display is perfect for looking at charts and graphs. Additionally, it's perfect for video editing and multitasking in general. It's a 38 inch panel with a refresh rate up to 75 hertz and has a display resolution of 3840 by 1600 pixels. It's definitely not up there in terms of the same display quality to something like Apple's Pro XDR display, but for my needs, it's absolutely perfect, and the curved aspect of the display gives it a different dynamic that makes for a very nice and enjoyable viewing experience. And then you obviously need a killer bass system for blasting them tunes while writing a paper for school or viewing some charts. So I, of course, had to get a speaker system that's worthwhile and does the job right. I opted for this Bose Companion 20 Multimedia Speaker System that features some awesome and punchy bass, perfect for the latest Bad Bunny album and the active electronic equalization balances lows, mids, and high frequencies for more natural tone and clarity. It's really great, and best yet, the volume controls are on this really cool spin wheel. It's also really fun to raise and lower the volume this way, just saying. And as for my keyboard and mouse options, I opted for some first party accessories, including the black on space gray magic keyboard, can't go wrong with that. It has an ultra low profile and has those super clicky and super tactile scissor style keys that are the same ones found on any M1 equipped MacBook. And finally, I do have my magic mouse in black and I casually switch it up every now and then with Apple's very own magic trackpad in space gray. I use the Magic Mouse for regular web surfing, and when it comes down to video editing, I much prefer the trackpad for the enhanced gestures, and it's just much easier to use while editing on it. Since I rarely ever do any kind of gaming on my Mac, I don't feel the need to upgrade to any kind of gaming mouse or keyboard. I obviously know they exist, and I've heard a lot of good things about those. So if you ever want to see me review a gaming keyboard or a mouse or anything like that, simply let me know in the comment section below. And then just to add a little bit of spice to my room, I love my hue bars. This is what I use for a lot of my lighting effects for my B-roll. It's super awesome to create whatever ambiance you want. Sometimes I shine it bright red when it's time to work and get on top of a video. And then when it's time to wind down, I prefer something a little more subtle, like something like amber or maybe some blues and some purples. And so that's my setup. It's very simple and minimalistic, but for my needs, it's all I could ever ask for. If I didn't have my MacBook Pro 16 inch as my main editing machine, I would have most definitely invested in an external hard drive for the Mac Mini to increase that storage. And there are several neat and well-designed options for the Mini that mimic its design language and can be attached directly to it. I may get one to install eventually, and again, if you want some extra hard drive options for not just the Mac Mini, but any Mac, I'll attach a few options with affiliate links down below. So that's my setup guys, but I did want to answer the question, how has the Mac Mini held up over the last two or three years and is it worth it to pick it up? Well, first off, the M1 chip is a beast. Everything, and I mean everything, is extremely smooth and fluid. Everything down from navigating Mac OS to web surfing to video editing, all of this is a walk in the park for the M1 chip, and best yet, the storage and SSD found on this machine is extremely reliable, fast, and snappy. Accessing the hard drive or copying files is really fast, and to this day, I have no complaints on the SSD. 
I knew when I bought this Mac Mini that it'd give me use for plenty of years, and here it is heading into year number three and still going strong. I would advise those shopping around for a new Mac Mini to at least wait until March. Why March? Well, this is when Apple typically refreshes some of its product lines, most noticeably iPads and some Macs. Given that this guy hasn't seen a spec update in two years, and given the fact that the M2 is already out in the wild found inside the new MacBook Airs, I can definitely see Apple releasing a new 2023 model with the M2 chip inside in the near future. So for now, if you already have one, I believe it's safe to say that upgrading to a new M2 model won't be all that great seeing as how the M2 chip is only marginally better than the M1. If you absolutely need one right now, I still say go for it because the M1 will future-proof you for plenty of years to come. But try your best to hold off until we see a new upgrade to the Mac Mini if you want the latest and greatest. Well guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think of my Mac Mini setup down below. And if you have any experience with the Mac Minis, again, just drop your comments down in the comment section. I'm clocking out for now, but I cannot wait to catch you all in my next video.